Good afternoon. Welcome to Weinig. My name is Daniel Du, and this here is Nathan Gower. And today we're going to be talking about uh, fully parametric uh, five-axis joints on the uh, ProMaster CNC. Now, many of you traditionally might be uh, familiar with the concept of going from uh, some sort of uh, cutting machine into a CNC machine, historically like with sheet goods, a beam saw to point to point. Well, today we're going to demonstrate how to manufacture a product like a passage door using a dimpter crosscut saw in a five axis holster router. Right? So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a software called InVision, which parametrically programs all of the parts for unit parametrics uh, all in one place. So, I can order the door and everything that comes with it, all the machining is just going to happen at the point of order. Okay, with that, we're going to come around. So this is my laptop and this is InVision. Okay, so well, basically you can develop your own catalog, whether it's nested base MDF doors, passage doors, kitchen uh, uh, parametric furniture, anything. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a door. In this case, I'm going to pick a parametric louvered door. And so here you can see the door, you can see all the choices. So if I want to change the height, the width, mm -hmm. if I want to change the, the top rail, then this, the, the, the width of the top rail in a, in a Meyer Morris and tenon haunch joint, uh, obviously I would, it would affect the machining of the, of the styles. So in this case, I only have uh, five inch uh, lamellas. So I'm just gonna order it at 60 and 23, 60 inches tall, 23 inches wide. And so what I would do is I would, I would just say I wanna select one and in the moment is creating all of the, what we call hop files for the Holton machine, and all the, which is effectively the five axis G code it's going to create the cut list and all my labels. Okay, and so as I come through here, right, once I save the order, it's going to send everything to the database. It's going to give me a job number 71, and we'll want to remember that. And so then I can come over to the CNC so it's easier to show you on what it did. So I can just open up all of my 71 job G code files. Right, and so it's going to open these up. And you can see uh, this is an example of the, the uh, style with the uh, lock set in it. So you can see all of the joints is doing a, a French miter or Morris tenon haunch joint. It's going to put an inside profile on the bottom and it's going to do parametric louvers on the top, a three, uh, three degree back bevel, and uh, finish the lock set. Okay, so this is just an example of the types of programs that we can make. Uh, if I was to change the overall height of the door, it would calculate how many louvers I needed and also do all of the machining for those louvers. Okay, that said, we're going to walk over to the dimpter, which is going to measure a stick. We're going to optimize, cut it, and label it. All right, so if you remember, my job was 71, so I can just go to the screen, uh, click the material. Pick the job 71, I click import, and there's my cut list for that door. Now, in most cases, you would have either an inkjet printer or a label print. In this case, because we're going to barcode at the uh, router, uh, we're going to put barcode labels on. Uh, we have identifiers in the uh, inkjet area, which would tell you, for example, cart, slot, uh, information. Uh, but with that, let's uh, go ahead and cut a board and uh, make some parts. So the saw has cut the pieces, print the labels. So we have the labels are coming out in the same sequence the saw is cutting. So now I just turn these parts over to Nathan, and away we go. We have a QR code here, which is what he's going to scan when we get over to the router. Here we have the Holzer ProMaster 5-axis router. Now, one of the things that we're going to do here is, by demonstrating the parts that are being machined completely in 
one step, eliminating all of the single purpose machines that would tri uh, traditionally be used to make a passage door. For example, you'd have a hinge machine, a lock set machine, inside profiling, that kind of thing. We're gonna take care of all of that in one step. That? All right. So now we've got our cut component with our barcoded label. So as the operator, I don't have to know exactly what machining is going to be on this component, right? So my job's pretty simple today. I scan the QR code and it's going to automatically load the CNC file onto the respective side of the table that we've programmed. So at this point, I just get to activate the table and now we're gonna place the component on there and we're gonna do our five axis machining. So we're gonna see the head come down. It's gonna twist into the mortise joints and create all of those for us. It's gonna do all of our louvers for us. And the great thing is we don't have to do any tool changes other than the louver Right, so all of that articulation is not separate aggregates, okay?
So as you can see here, we got to see the five axis bend and manipulate around the material, right? So I just want to highlight everything that we had done during this process. So the, the first thing we saw here were the uh, French miters, right? So we've got our mortises that we've done here, and also we've done the 45. So if you saw the bit come in and shave, and then we clean up the face, and then we machine out the pocket for the mortise. And this is what Daniel was talking about with the louvers. So we've defined that this is the space between joints. So it's parametrically applied the louvers inside of that space, right? Okay, the other thing you'll notice here that makes this door really unique is the fact that the top of this door, we've specified louvers, and the bottom, we've specified that we're gonna do a solid wood panel. Right? The difficulty is that you, you're unable to do these different steps on single purpose machines. That's really where the parametrics and a five axis CNC come into play and allow you this flexibility in your product line. And then the other thing that you'll notice here is we did the lock set. So this was defined as a variable in Envision. So parametrically, the lock set could be adjusted for whatever hardware the customer desires. as much dust on the table as possible. Thank you, Daniel. So, so now I'm gonna scan the next part here. So if you have any questions about anything you've seen so far, if you can ask in the comments, we'll answer some of those here at the end of the dialogue. So I'm gonna scan the next part. I'm gonna come around to the machine screen. I'm gonna double check it loaded correctly and set my scanner. Now I'm just going to activate my zone so my pins come up. Okay, so now my pins are up and I can load my part. Now we've got our fully parametric rail 
that we can fit right into the style on our component we've machined. Yeah, and one of the things that's really important the way Holter does this, you notice it's all done with suction cups. It's, we don't use any of the clamping traditionally. I mean, we still have to go to the clamping if the parts gets really small, but for normal woodworking pieces, kitchen cabinets, uh, passage door stuff, uh, we just do it all with suction. Okay, so now I can take this piece here, right? and then I can just slide it into the joint, and you can see how well that profile blends right together. All right, which is, the, which is the value of a, a, a French miter joint, and then it just pops right out. So we can take all the joints and put it all together with unit parametrics so the customer can get what they want to buy and it's easy for you to manufacture it, regardless of height, width, and then you can interchange different uh, dimension pieces within the assembly, right, and the machines. And so now what you would see what a finished product looks like, this is, would be, in this case, we put uh, louvers on top and bottom. You can see how tight the joinery work is, right? You can also see the louvers, how regardless of the height, we'll always maintain a gap between the very top uh, louver and the top rail and the center rail and the bottom louver. And then we can do that in sections. We also have the, uh, the hinges machine, the lock set. So all of this happened in, on one machining center. One of the things that we really didn't demonstrate, but is really good to know, is if we want, we can put all five frame pieces on the router at one time to really reduce the number of tool changes. Uh, depending on what type of volume you want to run, we can have one saw run multiple routers, or we can go to a very small saw that does the integration, the identification, the labeling, and send it over to the router, no problem. Okay? So, Nathan, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, the, the, nice, the nice thing about the function of using a five axis to do a, uh, a parametric joint, right, is you get a lot of flexibility. So you're able to offer your customers exactly what they've specified. So you can get into some more intricate details. Yeah, now there's no question that in the big picture of manufacturing, right, you will be able to produce more parts in a, in a faster timeline using single purpose machines. But if you think historically about it, like kitchen cabinets, you are in, enable to, unable to produce what the customer wants to buy as far as any kind of parametric uh, dynamic product. So if you have a passage door that you want any level of choice in, right, it's really difficult to do that and it forces the operators to know individual things about individual parts every time, every yep. time, all day long. Yeah, and managing hundreds of files from an engineering perspective is no fun at all. And the other thing you have to think about is like, okay, so today we've used a, uh, a five-axis ProMaster to create a louver door, right? Yeah. But tomorrow I could be creating a, a customer's kitchen or, or some odds and ends uh, tables. I think we've got a customer in South Dakota that's making bar tables with this five axis, all parametric joinery. So there's a lot of flexibility now in what you can offer as opposed to just buying single purpose door manufacturing equipment. And I want to be really clear because a lot of people might be confused about what they saw. Here, the software generated a G code file based on instructions it saw in the template. This is not a parametric macro you know, that does all of this stuff and then we can change the dimensions. Right. Every element of choice hinge handle hardware is developed by the user. Okay, so with that, um, I'm not sure if there's any questions or what, what the live feed looks like. Hey guys, uh, so Daniel. Well, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks <all> right. <laughs> Christian Smedberg. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hey everybody, uh, Christian Smedberg. Um, and guys, thanks a lot for uh, demonstrating uh, this uh, this whole demo, I thought that this one um, was really very complete because we really took parts. Well, we're technical through, people. We took part, <laughs> parts through multiple machining centers today. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so, that's the real. That's what customers actually have to do in real life. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a, yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the demo today. I mean, it's difficult in real life to be doing this if you don't have the right front end that can do the parametrics for you. Sure. Yeah. And the other thing is, like, all the all the variation in the door is determined by the engineer who develops the template. Yeah. So what choices he wants in the product, he or she can include them, right? But 
the, none of these choices in execution or how to do things are done on the floor. All of the front end decisions, yep. the bill of material, the engineering is all done up front. So you can have one person controlling the entire flow. Huh. All right. So guys, we've had some questions okay. uh, throughout the uh, throughout Something the beat here. <laughs> yeah, so always good to know, right? It's so, good to know uh, not alone. so we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go through some of these. Uh, first of all, what size was the? Uh, can you give us some specifics about one, the ProMaster, and then also the saw? What size were the machines? What models, etc.? Uh, I believe it's a seventy-one twenty-five, which just means it's a pod and rail machine with five axes. Okay. Um, the different other numbers represent how. Um, uh, this is a fairly standard machine. As far as uh, spindle horsepower, it, it's not a water-cooled spindle in it or anything like that. Uh, it's just a five-axis route. Okay. Um, you know, uh, you can adapt those with moving pod and rail if you want more automation. Yep. Sure. Things like that. If you're going to do a lot of uh, raised panel work, you know, you know, with uh, a lot of hardwoods, we might want to, you know, uh, step it up on as far as the cooling. For the okay. Spindle, right. 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 All right. Yeah. But for the most part, uh, unless we're hogging through uh, big lumber. Most of what we're doing at this stage for furniture is trim work, like putting that profile. That's about the heavy stuff that we do yeah. outside okay. of raising a panel. Okay. And what about the saw that we used earlier? Uh, that was a Dimter S50. Mm -hmm. um, okay. it, that, that, that could not be more uh, standard S50 than we get. It does not have width measuring. We can add that if you want to do, uh, accumulate uh, glued up panels. Okay. Right. right? But uh, for the most part, it's, it's just going to length optimize. I mean, Dimter is uh, known for its quality. Okay. Uh, I've been, people who know me know that I've been associated positively with Dimter for a long time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> They didn't cause this, uh, but uh, they, uh, they're a quality product. And we could, this level of integration, as far as the way it works with our server and uh, Envision, goes throughout the entire different product line. So if, if, depending on if you want to make furniture this way, you want to make doors, kitchen, cabinetry, everything follows the same procedure. The difference in machine is an automation question, not an integration question. Oh, I see. All right. Well, that makes sense, right? Yep. All right, so we had a couple other questions. One, I think, was partially answered, and maybe you could expound on it a little bit more. Okay. Is it possible to put more parts on the pod and rail machine to mill more of a complete assembly at one time? Yeah, yeah. so we can set it up so on the pod and rails you have multiple zones. So you can set all your, your door components up, right? And what that does is it reduces the number of tool changeovers. Mm -hmm. So you're going to maintain that one tool as it machines through all the components, and then it will do a switch. Now, in this case, if you do a passage order, we might have to make the machine a little longer so it can accommodate all those pieces. But we've loaded it up where we do styles on one side and then the three rails on the other. Gotcha. You just need to, because the motor's going to tip over, right, do those joints, you got to leave enough space for the motor to tip over. Sure. sure. Enough for the sure. spindle. All right. Can you talk a little bit more about the joint that we made? What, what was it again? What uh, is it called? The, the term, the, that, that joint has several terms. One is French miter. Okay. The other is mortise tenon hunch. Because it's a mortise and tenon, yeah, let me get it real quick. Um, you can see we're actually cutting a, a, a tenon on the part. And so on the, the, the part that it fits into is a mortise. And then what we do is we bevel these edges, right, so that they bleed together so that you'll end up with a perfect profile mean. I see. Yeah, yeah that's where this comes in. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, one of the things that we did is really interesting, right, if you were to have a top rail that had a certain amount of width to it, right, and what's interesting about this with a router is normally all your uh, French miter joints have a 45 degree bevel. But if the top rail had an arch, right, it would disallow that bevel to be 45 degrees. It would have to change to accept the radius. Right. Right. So Envision will calculate that for you. I see. So that both the style and the rail have uh, a matching shoulder. Has the same radius. That right? way the profile yep. blends from one part to the other, even in a parametric um, joint. So this kind of leads to the next question, which is, um, as far as parametric, can you go into when we say this is parametric joinery, what exactly are we meaning by that? Uh, the definition that you would say? Uh, the joint changes. For example, if, if, if I order the door and I have a unit order element of my top rail, instead of 5 inches, it is now 10 inches. Right? Obviously, I can't machine this piece with this joint. This joint has to extend to accept this piece fitting in there. Right, so the joint is parametric, not just the part, but because the the the, the, 
recipient of the part, in this case the style, has to change to receive the changes in this part, it's called parametric joinery. And it's critical too because what we're doing is we're not creating machining per component, right? We're creating machining for the assembly of components, right? That way, as one component is changing, the other is changing with respect to it. Yeah, but you're never defining the part. You're always defining the assembly and attributes of the assembly, like top rail width, right? And then the software breaks all the component pieces down to make everything correct. All right, so um, a little bit of discussion on the feed about the difference between the pod and rail and a nested base router. Mm -hmm. okay. So in this application, where would you see the biggest differences being? You want to take a crack at that, Nathan? Sure. So, uh, I mean, the first difference you're going to find is that in order to do all of the bending and twisting with the spindle that we've done today, you have to have the pod and rail because you have to get it up off of your zero axis, right? On the nested machine, you can put pod and rail, or pods on there, excuse me, right? But you've got to remove the spoil cord, you've got to resurface. So there's a lot of setup time that goes into doing something like this on a five axis flat table. Yeah, and you it's, must you must get the part up at least half the diameter of the motor width. Yep. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, so, will, you will land on something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. sure, sure, sure. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so uh, another question would be, when you ordered it, uh, when you ordered this finished product in Envision, how much setup time was there before that for setting up the part? Um, for setting up the actual door, I mean, it was probably about two hours. Two hours. Right, okay. uh, of defining all the joints and how all those relationship between the joints, the parts were going to work in the joints, uh, and how we wanted this, you know, what, what did we, for example, if you look at this right here, Right, if you look at the louvers, we had to determine what's going to be that offset that's going to be constant. Right, how did we want to play with that math? So we, how did we want our louvers to work? We had to, we had to calculate that in there. Yep. Right, but once we had that set up for the next 30 years, we'll never have to touch the store. We will just order from it. Sure, yep. sure, sure. Yeah, and, and basically, you know, if I'm, if I'm a customer that's already producing a louver door, per se, right, I already know the general math and my, my overall design for the door. So it's all in your head. We're just translating it down into the template so that we can make it quicker and easier for machining. Mm -hmm. okay. And like if I had this door and then I wanted it, I could make a choice where I either profile this or continue the louvers. Right? That can be a choice element in the template. Right? So we, you can determine all that. You have to know what, what you want to make and then get set about making it. Yep. So um, just, uh, just to educate everybody, could you guys talk a little bit more about Envision as a software, what other applications it is used for? Well, I only developed it, but Nathan used it. Yeah. <laughs> so Nathan's the authority here. <laughs> Pretty much. <Maybe> a little. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, Envision is for any product that you're going to create, whether it be solid wood, uh, panel processing. Uh, before I came here, I spent uh, five years in panel processing. And through Envision and um, Holzer, ProMasters, Beam Saws, Edge Banders, we created about a thousand uh, doors over a three-period uh, shift in a thirty-eight thousand square foot facility. Uh, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> doors, doors, <laughs> cabinets. I got my mind on doors, uh, cabinets in that period. So I mean, my entire catalog. I think I had about forty-seven templates, and that covered a hundred percent of the the product that we offered. So. But we also do nesting, we do uh, rip mold cut, uh, uh, five piece cabinet doors we, we glue up, we, we control the ripping of random uh, panels and fix width at the same time, transfer that into set up the molder, the tool room, obviously the cross cut saw, mm -hmm. and then we we'll go on to the router for a uh, raising panel outside door. Uh, we have uh, all of the core aspects of nesting, phase six, uh, you know, common line, all those, you know, core themes and that's sure. all of that can be integrated in Vision as well. Uh, very good. And uh, guys, I know that you introduced yourselves earlier, but can you talk a little bit more about what the Apps Group does uh, here at Wineg? I mean, what do you guys specialize in besides Envision uh, and, and making uh, cool parts like this? <laughs> well, I just write software, but Nathan actually deals with customers uh, more, more than I do. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the, the biggest thing we're doing uh, in the apps group is developing systems that allow the customers to really get the integration on the floor. You know, anybody can sell somebody a CNC machine, right? 
but what we're doing is we're making it easier for our customers to get the code to the machines and actually run production on a daily basis. Um, and that, that's the whole, the goal of Envision and, and the new software that we're working on. So. And, and largely what we're looking to uh, attack within, our, within the apps group is the idea of non-value added labor. Yep. But we also want to emphasize the, the impact of value added labor, you know, in creating processes like this right here. Um, and uh, I won't mention his name, but we had a customer who said basically, you know, he wanted an app to make doors. So we just added those functions into Envision and now, uh, you know, he has the opportunity to have an app to, that makes doors, yeah. yep. right? And you think about all of the non-handling of parts from machine to machine to machine yep. by just going cut machine yep. and everything's done from there, right onto assembly. Right. Yeah, and the simplicity of the operator, I mean, I didn't have to know what we were running. I just had to, had to grab the part and scan it. So, I mean, that's what we're working on is simplifying the manufacturing process through the integration of our machines. Yep. So uh, going back to the actual demo, so we ran two parts of uh, a louvered slash panel door. Um, and if, if you were to run uh, this whole door through these stations, how long do you think that would, that door would, would take run time? If we had a bigger machine where we put all five pieces up, we, we've tested that. We can run a door about every 15 minutes, 15 to 18 right? minutes, depending on how much joint work you want. Obviously, the louvers take a little longer, but if I was just running a profile on, those, on top and bottom, yep. I can make a door about every 15 minutes. Very good, very good. Completely fair measure. All right, well, guys, thank you. And uh, it was great seeing you all. And everybody who joined us, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, if you have questions about what you just saw, um, even if we're not live, drop them in the comments right down there. We'll be monitoring the feed, so uh, we'll answer them uh, when we see them. Uh, remember to tune in tomorrow, 2 o'clock, um, and uh, we'll see you then, all right? Stay safe, time. stay positive, take care. Thank you.